Hey everyone, this is Basketball Loving Dr. MBA. Today's story is another interesting one. There are various types of sports in this world, and there are thousands of pro players in these sports. And in those competitive categories, each player has their own unique set of skills. And with those skills, in every game, it excites and surprises the fans, and at the same time makes highlights in those games. And a couple of very special individuals are used in cartoons and even anime. Especially for basketball anime, there are scenes that just seem ridiculous at times. But those scenes were actually originated from real NBA players that showed those skills. On that note, today I will introduce to you a player that was good enough to be copied in anime with his amazing passes. And that main player is Jason Williams, a magician that was the maker of the fake elbow pass. He confused the opponent and even the fans with his assists. Known to be the most creative player in NBA history with his senses and imagination. He was white on the outside, but his playing style was stylish like black pears. So this player's nickname was White Chocolate. We will get into this not so average of a story in this video. 1975, in Bell, West Virginia, U.S., Williams was born and raised, and at an early age, showed potential with ball handling, and not just with the basketball, but baseball, football, etc. He was good at any sports that involved using his hands. At seven years old, he had set his dream as the NBA. In 1990, in his freshman year of high school, he showed fancy passes getting the attention of many people and also having a handsome face and having skill that was enough to get the Player of the Year award in West Virginia. His popularity was huge, enough to make fans overflow from the stands. But even so, Williams did not get any offers from any prestigious universities. That reason was because the high school he was attending had a low reputation and his grades were not so great. And the fact he had liked an illegal drug at the time, marijuana, that combination was definitely the reason. So Williams had no choice but to go to a less famous university and paid one year for that school and started playing in the 95-96 season. And a coach who rated his skill very high at the end of the season had become a head coach for a different prestigious university and brought in Williams right away. But there was a rule that if a player transferred, they could not play for a year. But this didn't make any problems for Williams' skills. And after that time passed, he had an average of 17.1 points showing the best performance in the team. And his passing ability was so good to have had 17 assists in one game during the season. But in the middle of the season, on February 1988, Williams was suddenly kicked out of the basketball team. And that reason was the same reason he had since high school, marijuana. In Florida, marijuana was also illegal at the time, and he was caught smoking in a drug test. So Williams had no choice but to enter the 1988 NBA Draft and put everything on the line. But most NBA teams had no intention in drafting him, so he wasn't even invited to the draft area. Williams had to wait outside and wait for any news on the draft. But what? Jason Williams on that day was drafted out of 58 players as a 7th pick. The team that picked Williams needed a point guard, the Sacramento Kings, and as a result from his first debut game, he was a starting member right away. And plus that, marijuana wasn't the banned drug inside the NBA association. So for Williams, he didn't have to hide anymore and could play his career in peace. And maybe because so, his potential had exploded he had made passes that average players couldn't even imagine, making them all over the place. And with those fancy plays, he got the attention of fans and people all over the world, and Williams right away had become a huge star. But making a pass, his eyes and body and even hand position was all going in different directions, so no one could figure out where the ball would go. And if they were to watch and give space while on defense, in that moment, their legs would pretty much mean they were frozen. So the opposing team would eventually just nod off and let in another basket. Plus that, Williams would also fake the direction of the drive and had dribbling skills that were fast and smooth to go past defenders. 
His height was only 6 foot 1, but could dunk easily, showing how great his jumping ability was. So when he was up in the air for a layup, no one knew what he was going to do up there, making the opponents he faced shiver and tear. The fake shot pass pattern was starting to get on defenders' nerves, so they would try to cheat and block, but would get tripped up by themselves and give an open chance for a shot. And because of his street basketball skills, Williams' highlights were on all the sports channels every day. And with his good looks and his outgoing personality, even though he was only a rookie, in just one year, his NBA uniform was fifth in sales, showing how popular he actually was. And he was also a model for Nike commercials, and came out in many other commercials as well. A lot of old fans will probably remember who he was. After that, in the second year, with his elbow pass and other tricks up his sleeves, he got the attention of a lot of fans out there. Being smarter and wiser than he was as a rookie, Williams would even dance in the air while making passes. Even if the pass had to be far, or the area was too small, he would pass over his back and making difficult behind the pack passes with fast and precise awareness. Ever since a rookie, hesitating over and over for passes making defenders go left and right, Williams, with his creative mind, his creativeness, can be seen as one of the best in the NBA. But strangely, as time went by, his reputation and value started to drop. In his third year, in the 2000-01 season, Williams had a lot of ups and downs. Now, the NBA had banned the use of marijuana and if players came out positive for drug tests, they would be sent to a psychological therapy session. And Williams came out positive, but ignored all the therapy sessions, and had to pay a fine and was suspended for five games, leaving him as the team's mess. And aside from that, to an Asian in the stands, he had said some racist remarks. And because he committed an assault, Nike no longer used him as their model. And in games, Williams was starting to show inconsistent plays, when only watching highlights, his play was new and amazing, but in reality, his passes were too difficult for his teammates to receive as well, which led to mistakes and turnovers, and there were many times that made the flow of the game go south. And plus that, he had forced a lot of shots and he was not very good on defense, especially in important games in the playoffs, he would be known as the reason for the team's losses. And seeing Williams' limits, the Sacramento Kings would eventually trade him off to the Memphis Grizzlies. And from there, it looked like he would pull himself together and start playing games steady. But like not being able to quit drugs, he would be drunk off his fancy and special plays. And because so, in every game his shot success rate and turnovers were a complete mess. But curiously enough, Williams' performance in the next 02-03 season with meeting the new head coach, Hubie Brown, would improve greatly. Being a head coach for the NBA in the past and a player analyst in the media, Hubie Brown, after becoming the head coach for the Memphis Grizzlies, would work on fixing Williams' flaws. And getting criticized, Williams, also following the coach's orders, would start to let go of his selfishness for fancy plays. And surprisingly, as time went by, his playing style had become more consistent and steady. And of course, there were many missed passes in games time to time, but not like in the start of his career, his fancy but inconsistent passes had disappeared a lot. And even though the fans were disappointed that there wasn't as many highlights, seeing Williams make less turnovers and the team starting to win, the head coach was very satisfied. As a result, Memphis for the first time and two times in a row would enter the NBA playoffs. But going for the championship was a bit too much because the opposing teams were way too fierce. And Jason Williams still showed a decent performance there. But with his weak defense that has not improved at all, and with him being the oldest in the team as a veteran, his competitiveness and leadership was not so great. And because so, the two times they made the playoffs, they had lost by a huge deficit in the first round. And now going into 30 years old, Williams' popularity was not as big as it used to be. 
and his life as a player in Memphis was not satisfying for him. So he wanted to go to a different team and play. And just then, with a solid recommendation from legend Shaquille O'Neal, the Miami Heat had taken in Williams. And at the time, there was superstar Dwayne Wade there and other veteran players that were great in the past years, and they all wanted to win the championship at least once and had that kind of mindset. Williams as a pro athlete also had that goal in mind, and now joining a championship team contended, he did not want to lose his chance. And he would, for the two key players of the team, Shaquille O'Neal and Dwayne Wade, be a supporting role for them. And now that he had less pressure on him in the past, Williams' gameplay was no longer inconsistent and unsteady. And as a result, his shot success rate and other stats had all gotten better. In the regular season, his average points were third in the team, and Williams showed his best in the playoffs. And ever since a rookie, through hard pressuring from the opposing defense, his dribbling and driving ability, and his precise timing and passing sense was still called the best, and he hadn't died down yet. And so, with having a top-notch passer on the team, the Miami Heat cruised their way from the first round all the way to the third round, and had arrived in the finals. The opponent they would face would be the legendary player for the Dallas Mavericks, known for his one-legged fadeaway shot, Dirk Nowitzki. At the time, Dirk had his career-high average points, and he was playing in his prime, just the beast. And also the Heat were playing the first two games away, so the pressure was on for the Miami Heat players to try and stop Nowitzki. And the results for those two games were over a 10-point deficit loss for the Miami Heat. Now Williams and his teammates were in quite the crisis, and they had to turn it around in the next games. And that's when Dwayne Wade stepped up and led the team and did it. Their winning strategy was using the referees. At the time, the refs were very generous to the offense, and with the slightest touch would call fouls left and right. Using this to his advantage, Wade would be more active on diving, and would get in more physical battles purposely, getting way too many free throw shots given to him. And in this process, Miami having the advantage with some questionable calls from the refs, would in three out of the next four games win by a one point, two point, three point deficit. And so, Nowitzki and the Dallas players mentally broke down, and the Miami Heat had finally won the championship. Well, it was a questionable championship for sure, but Williams did not care, and that day was probably the best day of his entire life. Winning the hearts of the fans with his fancy plays, and fixing his play so he wouldn't be a minus for the team's victories, and becoming an elite point guard, Jason Williams, because of his hard work, had accomplished the biggest goal in his career, winning the championship. And two years later, Williams had suddenly announced that he would be retiring, and left the NBA. But after leaving with no reason, he came back a year later, and signed with the Orlando Magic. His unpredictability for passing was somewhat similar to his retirement and comeback. And maybe because he had aged, his performance had dropped, and he was not enough to play as a starter. But Williams played with the number one center at the time, Dwight Howard, and played all 82 games. Until the third round in the playoffs, he played as a bench member showing middle class performance. But after he had taken knee surgery, he started to miss many games and couldn't play as much. As a result, in the middle of the season, Orlando waved Williams off, and he went back to the team he played for, the Memphis Grizzlies, and to show his play for the last time, and ended his 12-year career there. And after that, he would go on tour in China and play scrimmages for the fans, and play for TV shows, and even played in a 3-on-3 basketball league, and showed his fancy plays like he did back in the days. And of course, now that he has aged, his passes aren't as great as before. But through this, the first thing that comes to mind is glimpses of his prime days. And he for sure was the fanciest and most sensational basketball player in NBA history. Okay, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching, I'll be back with better content next time. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe.